Hey guys, giving away a Nintendo Switch and a game on the channel this month. All you need to do is like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And then when the video goes live that you get a notification for, leave a comment. That comment will guarantee you an entry into the competition, which will be drawn in 10 days. And if you like PS4s, my good friend Claytano is giving away a PS4 on his channel. So, I wanted to make this video to talk about what I think the best build to get to King is. If you, if you have to force a build, this is the build that I would force over and over again. Now, my general advice to you would be don't force builds. I think it's much better to be flexible with your build uh, ability. And that's my general piece of advice. If I were to give you five compositions that I think that you would need uh, to be flexible between, I would say either Dragon or Glacier Knight, um, any kind of knight composition, but both of them are really good. I would say three or six hunters. You can use the number one Asian build uh, that I put on the channel, or you can just use a classic six hunter build. You would need something like Beast Warrior. I think you would need this build, which is Feathered Assassin, um, and then anything like a God Mage composition. Um, I think those are the builds that you really want to be flexible between if you're looking to try and climb the ladder uh, efficiently. What I'm making this video about, however, is a video, a, a, a composition that I think is the least contested, the easiest to activate, and the most consistent in terms of getting results in the current meta. When I say a win in auto chess, everybody that plays auto chess knows that a win literally means top three. So this is a build that I have found more consistently than not can get me top three for numerous reasons because it beats the meta. It's good versus Beast Warrior. It's good versus Mage Compositions, or at least goes even with them. It's good versus Assassins. Um, it, it beats Knight, knight Compositions almost always. So it's, it's just a very, very good meta counter. The only thing that really deals with it well is Hunters, and it goes 50-50 depending on how, well, how stacked your Phantom and Shining Assassin are versus Mages. So... As long as there are not a, a, a massive overload of hunters in your game, then Feathered Assassin is always going to be a very good composition to go for. If you uh, suddenly see this video and everybody starts building Feathered Assassin and you want to beat it, there are a few compositions that do do pretty well versus Feathered Assassin. Nine Warriors beats it in general because they outlast them. It's basically a battle of who can last longer and Nine Warriors generally tends to last longer. Uh, like I just said, three and six hunters do pretty well. Six hunters is, hunters is better in terms of piercing the evasion, but if you've got a good front line for three hunters, it works just as well too, especially if you've got a good a, a stacked dwarf sniper. Um, mages can go 50-50, and if you've got god mages, they generally tend to beat out feathered assassins for the most part. It does come down to a bit of assassin RNG luck, but that's the thing. So those are the, the builds that if you start seeing um, feathered assassin blow up, uh, those are the builds that generally do well. So let's talk about this game. Um, I'm going to be a bit more holistic and not do like a complete round by round approach to talking about this game. Uh, I feel like sometimes I get drawn into all of the micro decisions that I'm making. Um, so I'll talk about them in a more general sense. Uh, as you can see here, I'm starting off with what I think could be a Beast Warrior composition. Um, I have picked up the feathered on the sidelines here. You see I picked up Shining Archer. I've also picked up my Whisperwood Seer, uh, or Whisper Seer rather. The reason that I've done that is because I know that, that, that Feathered are a really good option, and I also looked at the scoreboard and saw about 50,000 people going Beast Warrior, so it was very unlikely for me um, to be able to get Beast Warrior online easily. I am also haven't really got a very strong early composition, and I, at this point in time, I'm actually pretty committed to lose streaking. Um, feathered are a good build to lose streak into. The reason being is there are a lot of key four costs like Razor Claw um, and Shining Assassin that make the comp really good. That you have a higher chance of finding if you get to something like uh, level uh, level seven quickly, which which is done better when open forting or lose streaking, or if you win streaking and invest your gold, you can do it that way too. Um, a lot of people often didn't feel comfortable playing um, Feathered right out the gate. Especially when mages were strong, and especially when you saw a lot of hunter, six hunter compositions. But actually, I think it's perfectly okay to play feathered out the gate. The only problem that you will find is that because Warpwood Sage is a three cost, um, it might be a bit more difficult to find those core feathered units until you're some higher levels. So that's the only thing that you need to be aware of when you're playing feathered right out the gate. You do need to snowball a taboo witcher. Three feathered isn't that good. Level six is where the comp really comes online, um, and then level seven and level eight can get you your assassin and razor claws stuff on but yeah you need level six at least to really make feathered a super viable composition so going out the gate means you often end up losing anyway because feathered aren't very strong early um so realistically the um 
the way that you do this is you, you lose streak and you just then start rolling once you've got the income. Um, so you can see here I actually pick up a, a Whisper Seer level 2. And that sets me up. You'll also notice that I'm actually checking out a guy called Pegasus a lot. The reason I'm checking out a guy called Pegasus a lot is because he's got so many feathered units already. So for me, I, I'm looking at him and thinking how many of the feathered units has he taken? How wary do I have to be with competition? It's usually okay to compete with one person for another build, um, especially when it's druid feathered, because you you, you use less. Un there are there are the same number of druids in the pool as any other unit, but you actually you use less of them to upgrade. So you know, let's say you've got four druids and you get a uh, warpwood sage to level three. You've done that with a total of four warpwood sages. You know, realistically, if you have the four druids, whereas a normal unit would take nine units to get to level three. So, it's um, it, it, you don't actually extract many of the druids from the pool uh, versus other people. So you can you could ultimately have three people going feathered, and although it would be harder for you, you definitely, definitely, definitely could. Um, you definitely, definitely, definitely could um, get the units that you need. You know. So actually what I would have done here, and I think would have been the better decision in, in reflection, was actually just sell off the unicorn to get to 20 gold, because it's very likely that I find another unicorn at some point, right? Because unicorns are a pretty common unit. So it's likely that I find another unicorn at some point. So I really was probably better off just literally selling the unicorn and getting to 20 gold. That was a mistake that I made in this scenario. Because um, I'm attempting to lose streak, really hitting gold thresholds is very important because it massively increases your gold income. So. The mistake I made there was I was thinking that Unicorn might be able to like buy me some time to kill off one or two units to take less damage, but I would have been much better off literally just selling the Unicorn. Um, that would have been a better decision to make in that particular scenario. You can see that I'm still checking out uh, a lot of the builds that I'm going up against. It's good to see if the builds that you're going up against are... Um, you know, the the builds that Feathered are good into. I'm seeing Assassins, I'm seeing Beast Warrior, I'm seeing Knights, and one other Feathered player. Um, that realistically gives me the signal that yes, it's okay to go into Feathered. And actually, you, you see that I've picked up like a, a metric buttload of um, Feathered units here. I've basically said, okay, Beast Warrior is off the cards. We are, we are fully, fully committing to Feathered at this point. Uh, everybody else is fairly committed into their individual respective builds as well because we are getting towards round 10. It is hard to do a full pivot. Um, at this point unless you're planning it and have a really good economy so you can see that it's, it's a little bit difficult for, to, to, to plan for a full um, a little bit difficult to plan for a full switch when you get to level uh, level 10 so once you commit to a build at this point for the most part people stay committed to that build for the entirety I did a big boo-boo here um, and actually ended up winning a round. I, I, for some reason, I massively um, underestimated the power of a level 2 Whisper Seer. Um, their minions do do a lot of damage, and it's something that you should be uh, you should be mindful of when you're playing a uh, feathered build and trying to lose streak. I was just like thinking in my head, Whisper Seer is a bad unit, so at level 2 it should be fine, right? Um, that's wrong. At level 2 it's actually still a very good unit. Um, and you should definitely respect the power of a level 2 Whisper Seer. Uh, and I certainly did not, and that ended up losing my lose streak here. The ideal scenario for me would have been, you know, lost streak continued, 50 gold easy, lost streak through the neutral round, because it feels very bad to lose your streak going into the neutral round. Now, the reason it feels bad to lose your streak going into the neutral round is because whatever the outcome of the neutral round, you continue that streak. Win or lose the neutral round, you will continue your win streak or your lost streak. So if you lose that, you actually basically lose free gold from the, uh, from the streak that you had. Unfortunately... Um, I was good enough to beat a random player on the on the in the game, but I wasn't good enough to beat the, the golems. I just I, you just don't have any damage when you're playing um, when you're playing this, and especially because Whisper Seer is, is a pretty bad unit in terms of HP. You don't really have uh, any damage, and you can see here that I'm I'm actually just going to sell off this random uh, unicorn and put the um, put the Lord of Sand on. Reason being, unicorn not really offering me much. She's literally there to help me upgrade my druids. Um, and that's that's about it. What you can see here is that because I lost my my lose streak, I have essentially. Sorry guys, I just uh, heard something going on in the house. Needed to double check because I lost my loot my um my lost streak bonus. I've essentially delayed my fifty gold income by about two rounds, which means I have two rounds less of experience gain, two rounds less to roll for the druids that I need versus the competing player. Um, which is definitely a big deal. And I'm still continuing to lose anyway. So I won that one round, and then I've just been losing all the rounds after that, which has been uh, a bit of a big deal. I actually somehow 
pull off a, a really, really strong win here versus this uh, this random Shining Dragon with the crazy amount of minions that I've got, uh, which is nice because uh, I really needed this win because I don't really have a lose streak or, or a win streak to protect. So at this point, it's about protecting HP value, and I protected the HP value, which was nice. Um, and then I end up, on the next round, finding... Um, another set of core units. I actually sell off the unicorn because again unicorns can be found um, and I need the rest of the I need the rest of the druids anyway to make use of the fact that I've got two level two whisper seers so it's okay for me to sell off the unicorn because I am not actually directly looking to upgrade druids at this point in time so but you know rolling for razor claw and warpwood sage it's highly likely that I'm going to run into a uh, it's highly likely that I'm going to run into another druid another unicorn at some point. So I can see this guy has got a very, very strong early night build. He's got a lot of good level twos. Uh, I'm just going to lose this. This is basically just an instant loss. Uh, but I'm not bothered because I'm at 50 gold. And at 50 gold, even when I take the losses now, I can now just start in investing into experience. I want to hit level seven before the wolf round because the wolf round is a big item gain round because I didn't get any items from the, the, the uh, rock golem round. I'm, I'm, in des I'm kind of in like a desperate scenario to just continue to... Um, in a desperate scenario just to continue to try and uh, and find those items so all of my gold unless i get anything major for my composition goes directly into experience for levels at this point in time so this is what you do when you lose streak or you open for in general it, it generally comes down to just pumping gold into levels and i need to over the next two so including round 13 over the next three rounds i need to put at least 15 gold into experience to get to level seven so that's what I need to do at least by the time that round 15 rolls around, which is perfectly like doable because I'm getting 10 gold around from being at, uh, at 50 gold anyway. So only a half of my gold income is going to need to go onto levels. The other half can go either into um, actual units or whatever. So I actually end up going against the other Pegasus, the other Feathered player. Um, you can see that he's got, I think he's got six Feathered on board now, which which makes it very difficult for me to uh, actually kill him. What you'll notice is that um, I, I do look at his board a lot. Uh, I do look at the other guys, but for me, it's all about how many units that the Pegasus chap is picking up. What do I have to compete with? What, is he, what has he got? He is massively behind in the economy, and that is one of the major, major uh, bonuses for me coming into this stage of the game. He He's at 14 gold, I'm at 50. So he's making way less money. He's obviously rolling aggressively for druids. Um, I'm wondering whether that is specifically because he feels uh, that I am threatening the druid pool, so he needs to roll for them aggressively. Um, but that's okay with me because because I'm always, always, always going to have the advantage going from round 15 onwards if he has got no gold to spend. Because he's going to have to save at some point, and he's going to have to rely on the luck of the rolls that he gets on the initial rolls. Which is okay, you can do that, but it's never a good way to play the game. Uh, if you're relying on the refresh roll that you get every time that you open the shop um, on a new round, you are in a bad position as a player. Um, you want to be able to have the freedom to roll where you can. I still have a terrible composition at this point. I'm still losing left, right, and center. But I actually have a good amount of HP to work with. Uh, 36 is 35 more than I need. So I'm at 50 gold. We've got the wolf round to come. I can get to level 7. And once I get to level 7, I can roll it down and, and hopefully find some core druids to start bringing my composition online. Just when the um, when the the neutral round rolls around, I get a uh, razor claw and a whisper Wisp sage and a whisper seer, as well as two shining assassins. So I actually take a couple of rolls early on on the on the neutral round. I'm very glad that I did. I would never recommend that you you do this usually, but I'm very glad that I actually uh, I took a couple of these rolls here. I actually sell the whisper seer because I don't need him. Um, but this is this is enough, I think, to, to help me beat the wolf round, the the, the current composition that I've got. Um, I'm also going to start picking up uh, the rest of the stuff that I need. I, I'm actually going to roll down to zero after this neutral round. Um, again, I would never recommend that you, you roll down on a neutral round um, because you always guaranteed the income. But I rolled down because I didn't feel like I had a good enough composition to beat the neutral round. Um, so that's the reason that I rolled down here on this particular on this particular. Um, uh, round because I didn't feel like my composition was good enough to beat the neutral round and I felt like I needed to roll down to find some stronger units so that's the only reason I would ever recommend rolling down on a neutral round and I did it because again I did not feel comfortable with the composition that I had to beat 
the uh, the wolves and the wolves provided me with a lot of good items that are going to come uh, and be useful for me in the future i find the unicorn i get the level three whisper seer we're in a really good spot now um we just need to start you know trying to get our um the rest of our feathered on lineup going which means finding a um which actually means finding a uh, a wind ranger I'm actually going to roll a bit more at this point um, because, again, I have now got four druids. So if I just find the right druids, we are in a situation where uh, we can very... I, I rolled past... Oh, but, uh, that, that makes me sad. I actually rolled past a... Um, I actually rolled past a uh, wind ranger there, which is going to haunt me a little bit forever. Uh, but I was I was kind of very focused on getting the uh, the razor claw because I was so close to getting a, a razor claw. But now that I've got razor claw three, and this this all came down from some aggressive rolling from the early offset. Razor claw three is literally going to carry me, uh, so I can build my economy all the way back from zero to fifty with just a razor claw three. I know that he is an incredibly strong unit. I know that that bear is going to slap people in the head, and it's going to be great. Um, this I'm, I'm basically guaranteed. Um, win streaking from this point forward and if i find a shining assassin 2 i'm also guaranteed win streaking um because then i'll have everything you know at least two star apart from my warpwood sage so i'm i'm pretty happy with the the state that our composition is in right now i think that we've got a very strong composition i think that i can sit on this um and very easily build a win streak back to 50 and i did this because i knew that that I wasn't strong enough to beat the wolf round, but as soon as I started that snowball of finding all the druids, I was pretty happy to roll it down to zero to ensure that my the, my composition was strong enough to be able to get from round 15 to round 21 so I can get to level 8 and activate my composition. And now that I've got a level 3 Razor Claw, I have no issues at all with this composition being strong enough to beat everything that's thrown at it. The only thing... Um, that is a bit of a mismatch here is that I don't have six feathered activated, but I'm sacrificing six feathered for a, a level three razor claw on field, which I would do nine thousand times over because level three razor claw is insane. So I need to basically save as much as I can in this scenario um, to try and get back to uh, to try and get back to to fifty gold. There is nothing that I need to roll for apart from warpwood sage. So the only thing that I would be rolling for at this point in time is warpwood sages. Um, I could obviously take some taboo witches where I could, but it would, it would mainly be warpwood sages that I'm rolling for right now. I can see the other feathered player. He's now at um, six feathered, uh, but his again, his economy is not that good. I, I don't think his composition is that strong either. He, the only thing that he has over me realistically is a warpwood sage at level two, and I, and I need three more warpwood sages, and I basically got a level three warpwood sage. So I, I'm pretty confident with the way that my composition sits at round 18, and I think that I'm in a very good spot to be able to um, essentially take this game and get myself into at least the top three. I I'm looking at this composition now and saying this is a top three composition and I'm, I'm not worried about it whatsoever. And I actually just beat the other feathered player. The other, th the other good thing about how this uh, the, the other remaining feather player play this game is that he, he actually spaffed all his gold in the early game. Um, didn't have enough to get to level eight and won't have enough to get le to level eight if he continues to roll. Uh, and also when he dies, he's going to give me all of those feathered units back into the pool. Uh, I see a Wind Ranger here, so I finally pick one up. Um, this is someone that I'll bring on at level 8. I'm going to keep him there until level 8. I don't really feel like sacrificing anything. The only switch that I think I could make for, make that would, would make sense as a direct power upgrade would be s uh, switching out the, the Warpwood Sage for the Wind Ranger. But the Warpwood Sage is slightly tankier. Um, and generally I like having a bit more of a meat shield because I have a lot of damage coming from my Shining Assassin and my, my uh, Shadow Crawler and also the bear from my Razor Claw. I don't really need to be too concerned about getting the Six Feathered bonus activated instantly. Uh, and again, I'm still looking at Pegasus. I'm looking at how he's doing. Uh, the quicker he gets dropped out, the better it is going to be for me. Um, and having a look here, again, I feel pretty comfortable versus even Six Feathered players right now because I just don't think he's got the damage to deal with a Level 3 Razor Claw as well as the bear. Uh, and again, level 3 Razor Claw is such an insanely good unit for carrying you in rounds just by himself that I feel really comfortable with the way that this game is sat. So what is my what is my goal now? I've round, I'm, I'm going into round 20. I'm going to have about 25 gold. Um, what is my goal? Well, I don't need to save back to uh, 50 if I feel that upgrading my level would result in a major power upgrade for me. And guess what? 
after this neutral round, if I invest 20 gold into getting to level 8, I can activate my 6 feathered, which is a massive power upgrade for me. And I'm very happy to do that and then utilize that to win streak back to 50 gold and start utilizing that to play around with whatever I want. Remember, with feathered, you don't necessarily need to go to level 9. It is a level uh, 8 composition activated. Once you've 3 starred your druids, you can look to 3 star Shadow Crawler uh, and also your Taboo Witcher. Those are basically the only other units that you want to look to 3 star and then if you really want to you can think about level 9 or level 10 um, to bring on something you can you can decide what that is whatever but you can think about level 9 or level 10 if you really want to so you can see here that I'm going to invest the gold into getting to uh, level um, invest the gold into getting to uh, level 8 because that allows me to bring on the wind ranger that gives me the six feathered bonus and suddenly we are cooking on gas we have got a very strong composition with three razor claw we do need now a two star wind ranger and a three star warpwood sage but that can come i don't think we need it to win rounds um i feel very comfortable with how we are right now even versus this uh this um very strong dragon knight player who's got you know um uh, a full Dragon Knight composition activated at level 21. Hasn't got a two-star Dragon Knight, mind you, but he has got a pretty strong composition in, in, in all respects. One thing that is really going to be carrying me in these rounds is not only the Razor Claw Bear, but the fact that I've got a um, Shining Assassin with a... Um, what is that called? Like a, the, the thing that goes, the, the thing that you combine Magic Crystal and or Ring of Life for. I can't remember. I can never remember what it's called. But it builds into Orb of Refresh. Um, I've got one of those on my Shining Assassin which is not only giving her a bit of health regeneration, but is also allowing her to build mana for her shield really quickly. So right now I'm basically saying, okay, I take Warpwood Sages when they come, I take Wind Rangers when they come, but there is there is no need to roll for anything specifically right now. I haven't got a, a burning desire to roll for anything that is going to massively improve my overall chances of winning rounds. Um, Warpwood Sage level 3 definitely would, but I'm not going to blow my economy for that because I have a, I have a really strong composition, you know, whatever happens. Um, and even if I lose, I don't think I'm going to lose by much, and I still have that 36 HP total, which is a massive amount of HP to work with. Sorry, just letting the wind, just letting the wind blow past. Um, again, I ended up going against. I think I ended up going against the same uh, Dragon Knight player, but I felt like I beat him last time, so it's uh, it's okay to play into that again because I, I think we can just win this pretty easily two rounds in a row. If it's not the same Dragon Knight player, two people are playing Dragon Knights, but. Um, you know, like I said, Feathered beat Knight compositions because most Knight compositions rely on basic attacks. And Feathered generally counter anything that uses basic attacks. Warriors, it counters uh, assassins, it counters knights. The things that it doesn't count, it don't doesn't counter are the, the piercing from hunters because they use basic attacks with piercing because of their bonus. Um, and it doesn't counter mages because you don't you don't dodge mages. Find another Warpwood Sage. Again, getting a level 2 Warpwood Sage is a nice upgrade here. Enough to put him on the inside now to be able to be the first tank. The reason I was putting Whisper Seer on the inside was because he was level 3 with the most HP. Um, so I wanted him to take the majority of the damage from any compositions that were sp uh, sort of placed in the middle. Um, but realistically, uh, Warpwood Sage level 2 is good enough to do that now. And I want to keep Whisper Seer alive long enough so he can summon lots of his little dudes and uh, hopefully carry me through this game. Oh, the wind is really starting to pick up, so I'm going to try and shield my microphone. Um, so yeah, like I said, very comfortable with our position. Uh, we can win streak our way back to 50 gold really easily. Um, even versus a lot of these these warrior compositions, I feel very comfortable. I think there'll be a time, if there are any like major three-star warriors, that I, I will start to struggle. But overall, I think you know we uh, we are super strong right now and you can see it that we, we've been win streaking since we activated that three star razor claw we have a massive win streak to work with we're building our economy back really nicely um we're not overspending we're not over rolling we are in a really really good position so i'm actually going to do something here that i would apologies i had to briefly stop the uh, voiceover because we had some hoovering going on in the background and I didn't want the entire rest of this video to be occupied with hoovering So what I've done here is I've actually added the life crystal to my warpwood sage without combining it to form the vanguard um, From the shield now the reason I've done that is because um, Life crystal can combine with something called a dragon blood axe to give me a heart of tarasque Which is a much much more powerful item in general and I don't think the vanguard is going to necessarily win me this game more so than just having them separated as a shield on life crystal. So I'd rather play the gamble, given I'm in a very strong position, to go for the Heart of Tarask should a Dragon Blood Axe drop, uh, and have a really, really overpowered tanky Warpwood Sage. Um, 
So that's why I made that decision not to combine on my Warp with Sage rather than, than actually combine. It is actually worth noting that the item game is, is pretty um, important in Auto Chess Mobile right now. And if you know the strengths and weaknesses of the individual items, which I have a guide for, by the way, you can go and check it out. But if you know the strengths and weaknesses of individual items and who they're good on, it's always worth thinking about what could drop, what could drop from other people, how you could make um, really, really powerful legendary items, and if that could actually give you a cutting edge in the game, which in this scenario it probably could have done, and, and I don't think combining my life crystal without giving myself the chance of finding a dragon blood axe would um, have won me the game any more so than anything else. Uh, a dragon blood axe generally drops from Black Dragon King on round 35, so I, I have a bit of time to wait, and to be honest, a lot of games are almost over by that point. But I, I you know, I, like I said, I'd rather give myself the chance of getting that cool item than not. So we are actually at 50 gold now, uh, at round 26, which is insane. Now, there are a couple of things that I can do beyond 50 gold. I can roll for my Warpwood Sages and my Wind Ranger, which is a pretty good idea. I can also invest for level 9. Um, level 9 can allow me to bring on a utility piece. Um, that utility piece being uh, something like a, I don't know, uh, a Dark Spirit, for instance, or... Uh, or a Devastator, or a Helicopter, or anything like that. You can, you, we have the opportunity to do that. Uh, I pick up an egg here as well, which is uh, obviously a nice addition, because the egg can allow me to transform numerous things. I am two, two uh, Taboo Witches away from a level 3 Taboo Witcher. I could get one, one Warpwood Sage to get a level 3 Warpwood Sage. I'm not going to use it on the Wind Ranger, it's not so pressing, but there's, there, are, there are a lot of good things that I can do here. Uh, with the egg to give me a, a slight power upgrade. And if I used it on the Warpwood stage, for instance, I'm only losing two gold in that exchange, and if I... Uh, I would have to roll again to get the Warpwood Sage. I've actually just basically kept that gold neutral. So you've got to think about it in terms of the total gold spent to get the upgrade. It's okay to use the egg on something like a Warpwood Sage if you find one Warpwood Sage, and then you'd have to roll to get another one anyway. So it is it is important to know that Warpwood Sage is not a bad target for the the egg if you absolutely want to. Usually I save it in this composition for a Razor Claw, but I found a level three Razor Claw so early that I didn't need to. So we are now. Second, believe it or not. The only person in front of us is a guy called um, Boltuck, who I think was running a Beast Warrior composition. So I'm actually going to start putting all of my gold into experience. The reason I'm doing that is because I think that there are a lot of strong knight compositions here that I could be a little bit suspect to if they get super strong. I've seen some level 3 Hell Knights, I've seen some level 3... Um, Lightblade Knights, and they are all also six Knight Compositions, which just got buffed. And although Feathered in general beats Knights, um, if I don't have a level 3 Shadow Crawler, it can get a little bit dicey in the late game, because often when it comes to Feathered versus six Knights, or Feathered versus nine Warriors, it's who can outlast the longest. And if you get screwed by Knight RNG, and they just get loads and loads of steel shields stacking over and over again, um, you could actually end up getting taken out before you can take them out, because it really just comes down to who can last the longest. You can see here that my Shining Assassin actually got doomed. Uh, I'm also facing up a guy against a guy who has got lots of level 3s. This is the guy that's in first place. Uh, so I actually end up losing this round. A, because my Shining Assassin got doomed. Um, but B, also just these level 3s were just impossible to deal with at this point in time. So I lose my win streak here, which puts me in a bit of a precarious spot. But it also tells me that to actually take this game, I do actually need to upgrade my lineup. Um, that, that upgrading can come through... Um, whatever you like. I, really, Warpwood Sage would be the ideal upgrade for me. Um, but obviously, Wind uh, Wind Ranger at, at 2 would also be nice. So, I don't need to worry because I beat everybody else in the lobby apart from him. So, I don't need to like roll down to 0 or anything. But just taking a bit of extra time to start rolling anyway would be a good idea. And you can see that I actually end up using the egg on my Warpwood Sage to get Warpwood Sage 3, which is, in my eyes, a, a pretty good investment. I'm keeping the Shadow Crawler around just in case I want to go for Shadow Crawler 3, but I haven't really found that many Shadow Crawlers this game, so it would have to be a pretty tough ask to get Shadow Crawler 3, especially because there are Assassin players in this game and another Feathered player. And although they are almost going out, um, there's been a lot of time in the game where those have been removed from the pool, and as soon as everybody else dies, the rest of the three costs are going back into the pool as well, so it becomes a little bit harder to find Shadow Crawlers anyway. Um, but, you know, we, we are actually starting to sort of get back into it. We get a level 3 Warpwood Sage, which makes me very tanky. Got a big tanky frontliner now. We are starting to beat a lot of the Beast Warrior comps, uh, and I feel pretty comfortable with, with kind of like that one upgrade should be enough to, to put me in good stead. 
But like I said, I think actually level 9 this game will be really important. The reason I think level 9 will be important is because I do think that to actually beat the Beast Warriors and the Six Knight compositions, I'm probably going to need a utility piece of some sort. Um, you can see that I'm basically assessing where I should be putting my gold. Um, I'm, I'm looking for a Wind Ranger 2, realistically. That would be a that would be the, the ideal upgrade for me in this scenario. Just a Wind Ranger 2. I'm not going to roll below 40 gold. 40 gold is a good threshold to stay at. Because um, it allows me to move back to 50 on the next round if I need to. And especially as I'm going into a neutral round, I can win this round, win the neutral round, and then do whatever I want with the gold. Um, probably the best, the best input... Or the best use of my gold at the next round would likely be going to something like level 9. Because I'm actually pretty close to level 9 anyway. So if I beat this round and then beat the neutral round, um, getting to level 9 would actually be a pretty good uh, a pretty good way to, to spend that money. I can then think about bringing on a utility piece like Dark Spirit. I can also then think on think about bringing on um, anything extra like uh, another feathered piece. I sometimes like to bring on two Shining Assassins if I get two Shining Assassins at level 2. I sometimes like to bring on another level 2 Shadow Crawler if that's what I find. Uh, it just depends on, on the situation. The other the other feathered player did get knocked out, by the way, which means a lot of Taboo Witches are going to go back into the pool, which is good because I want to get Taboo Witcher to level 3. He's very close. Um, and also, those Shadow Crawlers did go back into the pool as well. So we've actually now got a bit more of those feathered in the pool. It's unlikely that I hit Shadow Crawler 3 this game because um, I haven't found enough at this point. Really, at, at level 30, if I haven't got two level 2 Shadow Crawlers, it's unlikely that I'm going to have the resources to roll for a level 3 Shadow Crawler because you, you just don't usually get that lucky. Um, so you, it's very likely that I'm not going to be able to find a level 3 Shadow Crawler this game. Neither is my Shadow Crawler particularly stacked, so it's not actually dealing the amount of damage that you sometimes see Shadow Crawlers do. It's still a great unit, it's still dealing, dealing a decent amount of damage, but it's just not um, the same level of damage that you'd expect to see a Shadow Crawler outputting because uh, she just doesn't have the, the, the right units. Uh, sorry, the right units? The right, um, the right items. So I'm actually now working towards um, another orb of refresh. This is actually going to come into um, into into importance in the next few. Uh, this is going to well, going to become important in the next few rounds simply because I um, simply because I um, what am I going to? Sometimes I just mind blank. It's going to come into importance in the next few rounds because I've actually, oh yeah, because I've got one of the components on my, my level 2 Shining Assassin, but I've also got one of the components on my uh, Wind Ranger, which means that I have a split Orb of Refresh across my team, and I'd have to sell one of them to get an Orb of Refresh on either, and to be honest, an Orb of Refresh on both of them isn't particularly good. Uh, orb of Refresh on Wind Ranger is okay, but there are better units to have it on. I definitely wouldn't give an Orb of Refresh to my Shining Assassin, it's just not worth it, she has such a low cooldown anyway. But, you can see now I'm facing Boltuk, uh, with the upgrades of, that I've got of a level 3 Taboo Witcher, uh, a level 3 Warpwood Sage, my level 2 Wind Ranger. it's enough to beat him, and his level 3 Werewolf, by the way. Uh, he eventually goes down to me, which is nice because he, I, I think, from what I could see, he was level 7 this entire game, and he spent his entire game rolling for warriors. It's a strategy that I've seen a lot of people employ, this kind of like this beast warrior strategy where you just roll over and over again. Um... So you can see now I've got the Dark Spirit. I want to I want to put him on the field. He's actually a better unit than just a random Shadow Crawler. And, I, and again, I don't think I'm going to get level. Um, I don't think I'm going to get level three Shadow Crawler this game. So for me, it's I don't, not, neither do I think I'm going to get a level three uh, Lord of Sand. To be honest with you, it's probably better for me to just sell off all of these units uh, and then look to roll for a two star Dark Spirit or. Um, or just maybe sell off my Wind Ranger to then free up the Orb of Refresh for somebody else. Because as you, as you can see, my Dark Spirit isn't really uh, generating mana very quickly. Uh, and that's one of the problems with Dark Spirit, if you don't have any uh, mana generation items on him, especially at level 1. He generates mana so bloody slowly, uh, which means his, his ultimate comes out way too late in the fight and has much, much lower impact than it would have done if you got it out earlier. Um, for those of you that don't know, Dark Spirit is really good versus Knights, because the true damage goes right through their shields. Um, which is obviously very important. You can see that I pick up another Ring of Life, so I'm like, well, if someone else dies, I'm going to get an Orb of Refresh here. I'm going to put it on my Wind Ranger for the time being, um, but realistically, I think I would not like the Orb of Refresh on my Wind Ranger. I would like it on something else overall. Um, I think I'd like it on the Dark Spirit, and I'm thinking that in my head right now. I'm thinking if I, if I want to get Dark Spirit online... Um, an Orb of Refresh on Dark Spirit would actually be insanely good. I'm also thinking about going to level 10 and bringing on a Soul Reaper because I could get a Warlock bonus and with the evasion that would make me very tanky and with a lot of sustain. So I'm thinking about a Warlock bonus on top of my um, 
I think about a warlock bonus on top of what I've already got here. So that's another thing that I'm thinking about in this game. Like the warlock bonus is obviously a very big deal. Um, it would allow me to get a lot of regen from my dark spirit, but also all of my units that are dodging, every time they hit, they will get life back, and that'll make them even harder to kill because it gives them more effective HP. The lifesteal in general is going to give them way more effective HP, which is good. That's what we want. Um, and it'll allow me to beat a lot of other uh, really good players. So we get the Kira Axe, we do get the Orb of Refresh, it goes onto my Wind Ranger, um, and at this point I'm like, I think that would be better on my, like, I think the Orb of Refresh would generally be better on my, <laughs> on my, uh, on my Dark Spirit, especially versus some of the Night players that I'm facing. So if I can find a what level 1 Wind Ranger, I will sell my level 2 Wind Ranger just to get the Orb of Refresh onto my Dark Spirit. Um, and you can see I'm now like assessing level 10, how much would it take to get to level 10, uh, this this bench that I'm potentially sitting on of two Lord of Sands and the Shadow Crawler, that is like 9 gold that I could sell off because um, I'm not getting those guys to level 3 this game. It's just not going to happen before either people die and the game's over or, or whatever. So that's something that I am uh, essentially looking at this game, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm probably not going to get, um, I'm probably not going to make that happen, essentially. Uh, you can see that this knight player that I, here, the uh, the knight player that I'm facing, um, Batax, what is he called? I can't see, Batars, he's actually beating me because he's got a, um, he's actually beating me because he does have a uh, dark spirit. Uh, and again, it's very important for me as a, um, it's very, very important for me as a feathered player to have a you know a way of of of, of winning this um so i'm going to give these shields across all of the units that i care about my tanky units and i'm going to start just doling out random uh i'm going to start doling out random um a uh, random wooden clubs to just increase increase attack speed but i'm i'm pretty convinced now that i just basically would like to uh get level 10 bring on a a warlock bonus but then also somehow get rid of my uh, Wind Ranger to give the Orb of Refresh over to my uh, over to my Dark Spirit. So we're going to beat the the Black Dragon King. We're going to get to level ten because we can get to level ten with forty five gold, uh, which we will get I think after this round. And then after that we can go and get the uh, Wind Ranger hopefully to get Orb of Refresh on my um, to, orb, to get Orb of Refresh onto my. Uh, onto my Dark Spirit, which will help me beat the Knight player more consistently. So I'm going to go level 10, bring on the Warlock bonus. I would really like to find a Wind Ranger, which I don't find, because um, obviously the Orb of Refresh would be much, much better on my uh, on my Dark Spirit, but I'm going to have to take one round and just hope that we can beat him uh, with the Warlock bonus, and then if I need to then hope get lucky with the uh, get lucky with the the wind ranger bring on a level one wind ranger sell the level two and give that orb of refresh over to my dark spirit which make this 10 times easier because he's got a level two dark spirit by the way which um is very powerful uh, he's got a level two dark spirit which is, is a very very good unit versus feathered just so you know you can't dodge true damage aoe um and you can see it's actually causing me a massive issue really i mean i sh it should this this should not be this close um it shouldn't be up to my Shining Assassin and my Razor Claw to win this for me, even though it ends up being the case. Uh, but he ends up losing as well. But it is it, it's it's way closer than it needs to be. Like we should be beating um, Knight players more effectively than we are. So we like we're winning by one or two units, which really comes down to the fact that I do need to get rid of this or a refresh and put it onto my um, uh, and put it onto my uh, my Dark Spirit. And there's my there is my my uh, Wind Ranger. I'm gonna buy him, sell off that Wind Ranger and then put dark, the Orb of Refresh onto my Dark Spirit. Um, also worth noting that it is definitely worth splitting up now, um, because he has got a level 2 Dark Spirit, so I don't want all of my units to be completely encompassed by his Dark Spirit ultimate, so it is worth me splitting my units up. He's going to still clump in the back and not split up. He would have done much better this game by splitting up, but it doesn't really matter because I've got the Orb of Refresh. But like I said, he, he, he I've split up because I don't want to get my entire set of units like smashed by... Uh, uh, a single level 2 Dark Spirit Ultimate. And as you can see, it went onto my um, Wind Ranger at the back, which didn't really make much difference. But overall, we absolutely crushed it with a double Dark Spirit, and we crushed him even harder on his on his um, his board. So that was a decision that I made to get me first place. Like, I think I was probably going to get first place anyway, but it was a decision that I made to say, okay, I think like this, is a, this gives me a better chance of getting first place, realistically. I'm looking for a level 2 Dark Spirit here as well, by the way. I uh, didn't quite get lucky enough for it, but... Um, it, it was definitely a gamble worth taking. I think I win on the next round, whatever happens. I don't think I need a level 2 Dark Spirit to win. Um, 
he's kind of split up a little bit and you can see I'm gonna just try and kind of try and adjust just a little bit for that as well put my um, razor claw over in the front line to try and get his his ult, his uh, bear out as quickly as possible but yeah I think just having the orb of refresh and the dark spirit essentially wins me this game um, and that was kind of a decision that I made with that item to say okay this is what I need to do to win this game and you can see two overlapping Dark Spirit Ultimates basically turn a losing round into a winning round for me. We churn through all of those Night Shields, we kill off pretty much his entire lineup, he gets defeated, um, probably more resounding, resoundingly than I beat him on my screen, and we end up getting first place. And this is why I think this build is one of the best builds to climb to King rank with. I just think it is that bloody good, guys. I really do.